And that's whenever all the drama kicked off. So now, fast forward. Let's say they do know about him. They did know he exists. And they're not going to do an affidavit of airship. And they're also not going to figure out what's going on with that marriage. Okay? So now, does the step-granddad have a legal claim to title on this particular property? Yes or no? I'm not sure. Well, he wasn't a step He was the actual granddad. Of, of, the, of the girl that's inherited, but the, the, the kids that sold it. Uh-huh. They're not, that's not their father. Okay. I didn't understand that. I thought they were the, the sibling. No. Um, then. Do, yeah, does the granddad that married a woman that already owned the property. Okay. So he married a woman that already owned the property. Does he have a claim to title? I would think so. How could he get a claim to title? What are the ways that he could have a claim to title? I would think the marriage. Okay. Marriage could be one, but let's say the marriage mm-hmm. is. Is, is not not the one, not could, the trigger. I mean, it could be commingle funds and everything else. Like, Spoonie, remember, talking to the mic, don't whisper. Here on NPR, we like to talk very quietly. Just give every, us the it's funny, Every time co- you have to bring it, he's co- gonna, co- get It's commingle funds. What does commingle funds mean? It's the same thing that happens when you're a uh, common law marriage. You have your funds mingled for so long that the title company, because you're acting as a married couple, means you have to... Uh, divest your assets. Yes. So now, commingled funds being one thing. What? What other? What? In within the commingled funds, little rule you're speaking of here. Would you say um, adding on two thousand square foot to a trailer house? Probably. That do you think he ever paid for a nail or a board or a piece of tin out of his bank account, even if the mingle if the uh, funds weren't commingled? Yeah. Most likely. So he has a claim to his add-on? No. No, no, no. Once once you're maintaining a property and paying taxes and doing all of this as a married husband to a woman, mm-hmm. okay, and 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 you pass on, your kids can go fight for that. Why? Because you're an owner. Well, and well, their inheritance is sitting there built up into an asset. That makes sense. So agree or disagree? You, I agree. Could could you get it before a judge and argue those facts? Yes. Would would an attorney take the case? Yes. It's not going to be very hard. Now, we also don't know if when she bought the property, if it's just a piece of real estate. And then, you know, they together put a mobile home on it that's personal property. You get what I'm saying? We have no idea what the history is, and title doesn't either. Yeah, so, they, could, so, they could have bought that personal property, rolled it into real property after he passed even though they bought it together you don't know yeah well there's a lot of theories but what i'm saying in within this little structure what would the title company do in this scenario do you think they would know everything that we just spelled out and not oh no get him omitted through the, affidavit of airships and everything else at, at which point they're going to go to Bree, the person that's on title you know what i mean it, it, literally mm-hmm. on the title commitment you, you know and, and reach out to him and say hey look Give us your story so we can button this thing up properly. And they didn't do that. They said they, we bought that. I was at that property on that, that TikTok was put, put on 1121. That's when I did it. Mm-hmm. And I don't think they saw it on like December, like December 8th, I think. And that's whenever all the drama kicked off. That's when they found out that property had sold. Yeah. Off I, of I my TikTok. I don't, I don't doubt that. I mean, but people got to understand, like, when any kind of title issue happens, because they're writing an insurance policy, and I promise you, they want the ability to have every out they can, the the, the title company, have every out they can, a way to protect their asset in the most valuable way possible. If you've ever seen those movies like Top Gun, where they're coming in to hit the deck and they hit that brake line, that's exactly what it's like. They stop the whole process until they get that out of the way when they find out any of this information. Okay. But I would think, like, uh, if you just go with, you know, the simplest explanation is always the most likely. I would bet either it was intentionally or unintentionally disclosed or not disclosed, or they asked it in a way, like we talked about last week, that it could be both true and untrue. Hey, does she have mm-hmm. a spouse? Nope. It's true. Her spouse has died. And they didn't investigate any further. So it's it could have been a good diligence. Well, yeah. I mean, you can you can answer a question that's true and untrue. She had a spouse. She did, but she yeah. doesn't now. 
because she doesn't understand the context in which the title company is asking the question. I would bet that there's a big foobar involved in the middle of this. And that's before we test out the power of attorney. Right. Like, I mean, you start mm-hmm. selling houses using a power of attorney, got to be a pretty strong power I, of attorney. I think that's a, a pretty, right. like, big point in the whole thing, that it yeah. wasn't even sold by the person on title. It's yeah, I didn't even check. A, was it a durable power of attorney? We don't know what, yeah. we, we have not tested the power of attorney yeah. yet. 